All right, guys, welcome back to the World Championship Series, European Premier League season number three. We have the victor of Group G on the line, Mr. Asa MMA, along with Asa Inu. How are you guys doing? Nice, nice. Yeah. <laughs> nice, nice. All right, cool stuff. Uh, happy to actually get this interview. It's, uh, I think it's the first time we've actually interviewed a Korean uh, in WCS. Yes. Yeah? Yes, with a, with a translator like this. Yes, certainly yeah, so. Certainly. All right, so, uh, so firstly, obviously, congratulations for moving on. Um, and uh, I've got to ask, um, in the broad spectrum of things going into this group, uh, MMA wanting to advance on and then go on to BlizzCon, uh, if he can accrue enough points. Uh, how did he feel going into this group against his opponents? WCS point to the group, what did you think of the group? 음, 별다른 생각은 없었고 일단 블리즈컨에 가야 된다는 생각이 너무 절실해서 열심히 했어. Uh, I didn't have any special thoughts about the group, but uh, since I have to earn a lot of WCS points for BlizzCon, I tried my best. How important is uh, getting to BlizzCon for MMA? Do you think? BlizzCon에 uh, 가는 게 얼마나 중요한지. Um, WCS 나뉘고 나서 시즌 1, 시즌 2, 시즌 3 해서 맨 마지막에 글로벌 파이널 하는 만큼 되게 의미 있는 대회라고 생각해. 그리고 NIM에서 그 소중한 추억도 있고 잊지 못한 추억도 있고 그래서 꼭 가고 싶어. Uh, since it's the biggest tournament after season 1, season 2 and season 3 of uh, WCS it's really important for me, and also I have a lot of good memories from Anaheim, so I really wanted to attend. I can imagine a lot of good memories indeed. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, uh, going into the, the final series here that he's just played, he's played against Baby Knight, can he uh, talk us through the first game? Because it was uh, certainly very back and forth. Mm. 마지막 그 Baby Knight랑 했을 때첫 번째 게임에 대해서 형이 봤을 때 설명한다면. 음 일단 세 번째 멀티를 너무 늦게 발, 발견을 아예 못 해가지고 내가 그때 한방 러시 치즈 갔을 때 밀줄 알았는데 먹어놓은 자원이 너무 많고 또 토스 본진에서 스팀을 실수로 두번 연속으로 먹어가지고 못 밀었어 그래서 되게 엄청 힘들게 이긴 것 같아. Um, so I didn't really know about his uh, fast third expansion, so it, uh, my uh, rush with the SCVs should have uh, just killed him, but um, he had so many uh, resources uh, up to then, so he had a lot of uh, reinforcements um, through his fast expansion. And also, I did a mistake uh, using Stim twice in a space, so my units uh, didn't have a lot of health. Uh, just that, just that very last map uh, that he just played. Um, he scanned and, and saw the attack coming uh, right before it happened. Uh, did he have any idea that something like this could happen? I mean, what was the main reason for the scan? Because against Tails, for example, it's a lot different. We're, he's maybe even expecting Tails to all in, but mm. against Baby Knight on, on that map, is there a reason why he decided to scan? Was it just a regular checkup? Did he maybe have a feeling that something like this could happen? Mm -hmm. 뭐 공격이 오는 걸 봤는데 어 어떤 이유로 스캔을 했는지 뭐 이미 그런 걸 예상을 했었는지 음 그냥 예상이 아니라 기본 토스 체제를 파악하기 위해서 스캔을 했고 베이미나이 선수가 좀어 건물을 한 곳에 모아지는 그 습관이 있더라고 그래서 좀 쉽게 발견했던 것 같아. So uh, the scan was just a basic thing. I um usually do. And also, uh, I analyzed Baby Knight and I knew that he always uh, builds his uh, buildings at one spot. Ah. So uh, I could know uh, what he's doing. Very, very good uh, in terms of scouting out his opponent. Uh, okay, so moving on to the round of 16. Obviously, he's uh, been there before. Uh, is there anybody in particular that's already qualified through that he would rather avoid? Um, Especially considering he, I think he beat 4GG at DreamHack, didn't he already? 2-1. Mm -hmm. uh, so is there anybody he would uh, like to avoid, or is he going to take on all comers? 
만나기 싫은 상대가 있다면? 음... 없어 <웃음> No, there's... Uh, anyone There's uh, no one who, uh, who he would avoid So this is... Uh, come on, MMA Will you win WCS? <laughs> I know you understand <laughs> Yes? <laughs> Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Good stuff. Well, it looks like MMA might be back, guys. Uh, any any last shout outs uh, that you guys want to give? Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So um, he just came from uh, Dream at Bucharest, and uh, it's been a while that he came to Europe. So there are no problems uh, about jet lag or something like that. Mm -hmm. So um, he thinks that he will be in very good shape for the next games in WCS too. Excellent. Just one quick, really brief question. Um, since Innovation joined the team, how much has it helped MMA uh, with his improvement? Is it helped a lot, or just a little, or nothing at all? Ah, 마지막으로 질문 한더 하나 한다면. 신영이가 우리 팀 오고 나서 좋은 영향을 미쳤는지 그게 형한테. 음 일단 팀 성적으로 봤을 때는 신영이가 와서 팀적으로 너무 좋은 건 맞고 개인적으로는 어 아직 그렇게 많이 배우진 못했어. 그래서 한국 돌아가면은 시간이 있으면은 많이 배워야지. Actually, uh, for himself, it didn't really help. Uh... Till now, because they didn't really have time to practice together. Till now, but uh, when he goes back to Korea, uh, they're gonna uh, train a lot together. Awesome, nice. Maybe even a scarier MMA and a scarier innovation. All right. Well, uh, unless you've got any more questions, Paul. Mm -hmm. No. Good stuff. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much, guys, and uh, congratulations, MMA, for advancing out of the round of 16. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Bye bye, MMA. Bye. Thank you. <laughs> bye. All right, well, awesome guy, awesome he's, guy. He's pretty cool, as is Inu, uh, actually. Very nice yeah. guy as well. Everyone on Team Ace is so friendly. That's right, Ace are uh, really dominant teams in yeah. recent times, and MMA will be here and joins the other 12 players that have already made their way through. So we have 13 now that are coming to the live uh, event just next week, starting on Tuesday next week. It's very, very close to happening, and I'm personally very excited to have MMA come and advance through in first place in this group. But that means that we need to now work out who's going to be in second. Yeah, we're narrowing it down to three. Our next match is going to be between two players who are on the verge of falling down to challenger lead. It's going to be NRS Crass going up against MVP Tails. But before we get into that, to find out who falls down, who advances on to play against Baby Knight, we must say a big thank you to our sponsor, in the form of Rockat. Uh, and again, now it's down to the three players to choose from. If you want to win the Cone Pure Optical Mouse, all you have to do is head over to Twitter, hashtag Rockat, as well as hashtag WCS, and tweet us who you believe will be the second place finisher of this group. Only three left. That's right. Easy to do so, and the odds are getting more and more in your favor. <laughs> It's kind of cheating, really, but whatever. You can, you can do as you please, guys. You can do as you please. All right, so Belshire Vestige will be our first map between these guys. Are we expecting, once again, Tails to bring a lot of aggression, or are we expecting him to play out the game a little bit longer against opponents that he's not as familiar with? I'm pretty sure he's going to play aggressive. Yeah. Uh, against MMA, it's always going to be difficult to pull off, but if we look back at Season 2 when players also did this style to play aggressive to pick up the wins, it was achievable. Hmm. So I think that if he was going to, I mean, I guess there's a couple of ways you can look at this. You can say, well, maybe he tried to be aggressive versus MMA because he knows he can't beat him. Directly knows 100% he can't beat him yeah. in a straight up fight. Maybe he says, all right, well, Crass is not MMA. Maybe I can beat him in a normal fight. I may play a normal game. But I think that we probably will just see, once again, the same aggressive style from Tails. Yeah, these guys probably all been watching these games, trying to scout out their opponents. They had the advantage at the very beginning of all playing the kind of same matchup that they were all going to have in the next round, maybe, like if it wasn't going to be the mirror. So, uh, and it's worked out that way. So obviously, getting as much as intel as possible uh, is absolutely, absolutely important here. So uh, Belshia Vestige, as we load up onto this, countdown's begun uh, between these guys. Do you think uh, Tails can eke it out with aggressive styles? Or? Uh, he may be able to pick up a game, but if he plays that 
style throughout the entire of the series, I'd have to favor towards Crass. Mm. Crass will know that Tails is going to play like this, will be on top of his scouting. So if we see Tails play aggressive every single game, I think that Crass would have an edge to be able to hopefully move into the finals match. Oh, yeah. Crass is certainly no pushover. We saw that against here, Baby Knight, that he was not just going to be completely pushed over. He had advantages that were uh, ended up falling away from him. But now we have, spawning up to the top left-hand corner, our blue Protoss representing MVP and Korea. He is MVP Tails. And down to the bottom right as our red Terran representing Neurosoft as well as Germany. He is Crass. I think that uh, Crass will win this series two games to one. Mm. Hmm. There you go. I, I think I will go with this as well. If Unless Tails can somehow get a very, very advantageous position with this aggression that he's probably going to put on. I don't... There's no other way it's going to work out. Crass, again, he's no pushover. I said it at the very beginning. He's no pushover, um, and he's going to anticipate what Tails is going to be up to. All right, so that, that's the main focus. It has to be of Crass, right, yes. for, for this series. But Tails, on the other hand, um, <clears throat> I really don't think it's wise for him to try that style over and over and over. Remember that Tails, coming into this group today, is focusing on one thing, to make sure that he can try to get out of the group even if it's second place, because if he can get out of the group and play to the live show, that's where his strengths will be. That's where he can really show us what he's got, hmm. because right now it's very difficult for him to do that. And I'm sure that he's just going to go, all right, I'm just going to cheat three games in a row, man, you know. Yeah. Live it. Let's do it. <laughs> but I, I think he's, <laughs> he'll play this, I think maybe maybe smarter with his builds, like... Show one thing, do another, play a bit of mind games potentially. But look at Crass, he's actually going command center first. Wow against Tails here, inside his main base, scouting around inside his main base as well, but this is almost, for Tails, if he was to scout early on, telling Tails, come on, he's baiting it. Yeah. He's like baiting yeah. it by going command center like this. Mm -hmm. Tails is going to chrono boost out his first Zealot here as quickly as he possibly can do. There may be a few, uh, uh, just a few little units here for Crass if uh, it's going to be straight chrono boost focuses into the uh, gateway for a second time with that second Zealot. Um, so this, uh, this could be a bit annoying here for Crass. He's just going to have to micro his heart out. Mm, yeah. But from the high ground, he should be fine. Yeah. So. Could even just wall this off and keep those guys out. If That's the thing. I depot. mean, if he feels threatened, but I don't think he is going to threaten another supply mm. depot, of course, because he's going to have his command center finish up soon. That'll boost his supply. So he actually shouldn't be looking to throw down another structure here. Um, he'd just be after the micro against it. But, you know, it's only a single zealot. It's not too difficult to do. You can even pull SCVs. Technically, you could even lose an SEV. Yeah. But he does throw down a supply depot. Look at that. He sees the Zealot and says, all right, you know what, Apollo? It's fine. I actually <laughs> will build a supply depot and will make sure I'm safe against this. But one thing, though, that with Stalkers being pushed across the other side of the map here, uh, it is becoming more cre increasingly difficult to actually go down to expand. Mm. Coming down this ramp where there's a Zealot, Stalker, and a Mothership core down there does get harder. And he sees the command center first, too. Yeah, he bulks up there and sees exactly what he needs to. So it knows what he's going to be playing against. And with that, it starts his nexus behind this. A CV waddles on in and sees this at the perfect moment. Mm. Uh, Another Chrono Boost is Stalker, though, from Tails. He's got wow. you know, one going across the map, a second one as well. He gets into the main base, which is fine. But I still feel that in this position for Crass, it's much better to throw the... If you're going to go Command Center first, do it like MMA did. Put it down on the Command... Put it down in the low ground. And then just make sure to micro your marines well, build a bunker, because now in this position it's very difficult to expand, to actually mine from your command center. Yeah. Sure, he gets an SCV boost, but he isn't going to very easily just move down this with two Zealots, a Mothership Core with a Time Warp, and a Stalk and a second one coming across. Yeah, he's pushed up against the wall. He's going to try and go out and uh, maybe tickle away at that Mothership Core, but uh, it will end up pulling back just out of range. Needs to bring an SCV over here to repair this supply depot, otherwise it's going to die. Oh, I'm kind of surprised that that's going to end up dying. The Time Warp as well, uh, trying to slow down these Marines. Doesn't lose the Mothership Core. Nice control by uh, Tails so far. Hmm. Yeah, he's actually going to get in here. The Mothership Core end up, does die, so... But there's another Stalker hmm. too, remember? Yeah. About to come in. He's got to be careful. Losing all these units without killing too many SCVs is, is not that good here. But no. he's already picked off a few. He's still not letting his opponent mine. And how does Crass follow this up? He just secures his natural. No, he just plays a very normal game. Just yeah. throws down the tech lab now, but even his tech lab and stuff is delayed as well. 
Uh, and more gateways coming in here from, from uh, Tails. He knows that everything's delayed here. Remember that MMA in that previous game bought extra time with his, um, with his bunkers and then bought extra time to get Stim done. Mm. It's, actually, that's a really, really fast scout. Okay, that, that's actually faster than I expected that to come in. He sees the extra gateway, so he actually has enough time. And to be honest, he may not even need to buy time for an upgrade if he simply has enough bunkers. Yeah. Uh, whoa, Twilight Council as well here for Tails. So kind of changing things up a bit after being scanned. Uh, bunkers continue to lure to the front. Uh, so this change up, is he just going to go straight into Blink and try and catch his opponent out off guard with that? Or what, what's, his, uh, what's his thought process here? Just for follow-up. For follow-up. Mm. Like, he, to be honest, I mean, it's not very smart to just cancel stuff, so he could easily just not even do an attack here, yeah, forcing yeah. a major overreaction. Uh, and he is, look at that, just going to throw down the uh, the Nexus. Wow. So the follow-up here huh. will be Blink, and it will be just, you know, defensive Blink like we saw Baby Knight do. But as we can see, that Crass is just going to be completely on the wrong receiving end. To be honest, if I'm as Tails, I'd be on the edge of my Nexus, and I'd be looking to move forward. As soon as the SCV scouts three sentries just moving down, that's where Crass freaks out. Because yeah. Crass is almost certain this is going to be an attack. Yeah, he is. Uh, you're right, though. Just to make it look like you're still going yeah. for this is really important here to sell exactly uh, what you're doing against your opponent. Does he end up poking forwards and see those sentries and, uh, you know, assuming that there's going to be a summer assault? He or? will probably just think it's not an attack anymore. All right. The sentry's still there, or four of them. He's going towards the third, and he'll probably oh, get there, too. Yeah. So he knows that this isn't not. And he gets a bit of a bigger scout than MMA did against Baby Knight's three, uh, uh, three command center. For sure, like a, uh, this is a much, much faster scout. And with this kind of information now, Crass, to be honest, even doesn't need to throw down a third command center. He try, he may just try to throw down two extra barracks and put the pressure on even harder than it can come now. Or he could just try to throw his third down too. Obviously, it's up to Crass what he decides to do. But I think uh, extra barracks would be quite smart. And there they go down in the mm. main base here. Yeah. So looking to apply the pressure and uh, keep his opponent on his toes. I mean, his army supply is 30 to 22 right now. So he certainly has a very, a very nice sizable army, but at the same time, Tails with these four sentries banking up a lot of energy and has Photon Overcharge. It's going to be difficult for Crass to actually break that uh, position thus uh, at the moment. Mm -hmm. Looking at the sentry county, we'll probably be able to cut this off quite easily, and Blink is almost yeah. done too. Crass has got to be a little bit careful. I mean, Stim is done as well, but if this gets cut up nicely with a, with a lot of Stalkers here... He saw it with a Hallucinated Phoenix that his opponent was coming in from both sides as well. So, uh, a lot of knowledge there for Tails. Wolf chase that on back, even with an offensive blink forwards to try and catch some of these units. But that's a lot of bio. He has to be careful about where he's going to go with that. The Fossil Shields go down, but hello, there's no Zealots there to actually do the damage. So he loses so yeah. many sentries. I think, I think the, the key words I just said earlier before, if he cuts it up, that was yeah. all of it at once, and he just <laughs> lost all the sentries. And now with five barracks behind this, powering up, Medivac's um, a little bit slow to start. I think he didn't have the, the stop put in the right position there. He's only got one uh, Medivac out. I'm not sure what happened there. That was that feeling where you take a big, big chunk, of, a bite of bread, and then it's like way too much, and you try and swallow it. It's like, uh, you can't actually get it down. That's, mm. that's a, a tough spot there for Tails. He's got a lot more gateways on the way, but he lost a lot during that. Yeah, uh, no combat shields either coming in for Crass. Oh, OK, there it is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a slip, uh, or at least uh, just trying to get that a little bit uh, slower. But uh, well, uh, <laughs> regardless of what's going on, f Double Forge goes down for Tails, uh, and that's going to be a lot of upgrades. But at the same time, he is getting aggressive with his own Zealots over the other side and got a few worker kills, but not too much. Yeah, I don't think Tails is in the worst position. I mean, he's, he's obviously not in the best, but mm. he does have Zealot Charge on the way now as the Forges are about to begin too. Crass is sitting with plus one attack and a handful of units here, but this is one of the most defensive maps that there is for Protoss if they are able to force field well uh, on the ramps and if they defend well in the main base. Mm, there's the scan. What did he actually spot Looking there? at the army composition, just seeing if there's any yeah. tech properly come in yet, if it's heavy gateway style, if it's not. And with all the warp ins, actually showed like all the gateways exactly. present. Exactly. So he walked in with everything all at once there. So he actually shows off the eight gateways. So Crass knows that it's not going to be very tech based. But he also knows now that there's not really going to be any splash damage either. And he even denies this pile on down to the bottom left if he actually uh, is able to kill that off with one marine later on if there's no zealot warpins there. But at least he'll be mindful of that position as Crass now 
Well, uh, he's going to be going up against Templar Archives pretty quickly here for Tails. Can can Crass hit anything before this Templar Archives is out? Yeah, or does uh, he yeah. just go? I mean, he doesn't need to pull SCVs or anything, but he, he still has just natural timing. Ooh. But that's that's kind of bad, because obviously he would have liked to maybe get that drop down. And, yeah. But the Zealot Charge, Zealot Charge is a great upgrade, man. Uh, it's pretty good. And this will help out a lot against these units trying to run up a ramp. And 1-1 one, one is, is very close to being finished now, and to be honest, I wouldn't even focus... Well, I guess you can get Storm down, but... I mean, Archons are fine. Feedbacks are fine in this point, too. It doesn't necessarily just need to be Storm. And uh, the Ghost Academy is on now on the way for Crass in response to what he's seen, but with this factory that is actually just landed in his opponent's main base, because why on earth not? Uh, so, <laughs> warping in a few Stalkers trying, trying to... Trying to get a mine into the mineral <laughs> line. Uh, it's worth a shot, I guess, for Crass. 2-2 uh, is on the way, though, but I, I still I think that Crass really needs to s still get something done, like some kind of damage. He's lost units. He's lost more than he's dealt, which isn't what's meant to happen against yeah. such a fast third Nexus. And that time isn't over yet. He can still do something, but soon it will be, because once 2-2 is done, we saw what happened when Baby Knight got to 2-2. It does make a big, big difference. He's mined a lot of resources. And then we even have the robotics facility coming in soon for, for a bit of a switch up when it comes to tech and observers. If Crash sits back on, on what he's doing, then I feel that eventually he won't, there isn't any chance to do anything anymore. Well, uh, Tails' army, it's fun, funny because, you know, just going for this gateway exclusive force, his army looks huge right now uh, going up against what his opponent has. That many zealots, how many zealots does he have? 37 zealots, oh my, I can't remember the same time I've seen that many zealots out. It's a lot of zealots and there's a lot of marauders in this mix too, mm. which aren't going to do the best against these, especially when these two two upgrades complete. That's a lot of zealots. Well, uh, 119 army supply against 97. I haven't really seen this style mm. out of a lot of Protosses. Uh, for a long, long, long time. Um, but he could actually just wave across him if if he's not careful here. Mm. He's coming from a good angle, though. This might not be it. <laughs> Has to retreat back out uh, as that high ground was given to Crass. Yeah, Crass needs to get his armor upgrade, too. I think he's forgotten about it. He didn't have enough money when he first bought it, and now he's kind of forgot because he's building ghosts and, and stuff. That, that actually can hurt in the longer this game goes yeah. on. Especially really, against really Zealots. Uh, Zealots swipe in double time, and... Uh, you know, these ghosts. Well, a lot of EMPs against this army could help out. Hallucinated Colossi here to try and uh, make this work and push up. Maybe scare his opponent, but wow. great EMPs hit a lot of those zealots. And if he bottles those zealots up, maybe he could do some damage to them. But still, waving across him with all of these zealots, can they do the damage they need to? Mm, the EMPs are pretty good. Yeah. They certainly were. And again, you know, just that bottled up funnel position behind these mineral lines makes it yeah. so hard for Tails to do the damage. Crass just obliterates all those zealots and continues to pursue those stalkers. Yeah, Tails fought on Crass's terms and Crass with the good EMPs as well. That really, really did work out for him. But Double Colossus is on the way here. Uh, zealots Ooh. at this level should be enough to hold on for now. Yeah, that army's not too strong here for Crass just yet, mainly because it's not even healed right now. So stimming and then trying to go for these engagements against that many Zealots is going to hurt a lot in the long run. He has to be careful as that photon overcharge will push this away with those Zealots. Ah, look at this though. Still without splash damage, it really does hurt you. Really, really do yeah. need splash damage. Colossus are almost on the way out. The Zealot line is dead. And once that Zealot line dies, he's going to have to blink behind the, stalker, uh, behind the Zealots here to really get the most amount done. Still trying to buy time for those two Colossi that do end up now rendezvousing with this army. One trundling down from that main base as well. Still charging on forwards to push away Crass and uh, not doing too badly, but he doesn't have Thermal Lance, so he has to be super mm -hmm. careful about it with those Colossi. A lot of gas available here. I mean, Archons would be great against this. Isn't? There's no ghosts either, right? So, um, mm, you know, nom, this, nom, this, nom. this is nice. Yeah. Getting a lot of splash damage in there, and those Archons will be able to tank quite a bit. Uh, but And 3-3 three, three is about to finish up as well here for Tails, so he has a good opportunity to shut this down from Crass. Mm, yep, he does. And really? I actually, you know, now that this is, well, with 3-3 three, three about to finish, 3-3 three, three is very, very nice here. There's no Vikings. He's had to build two starports here to be able to catch up in time. The fourth command center has been stopped as well. Zealots down to the south uh, have mm. been able to do some great harassment as well. Got a uh, few SCV kills, even forced the cancellation on a fourth uh, command center that was uh, halted from being produced. So 
really good aggression here from Tails behind all of the seeming aggression from Crass that just wasn't doing anything at the front. Yeah, to be honest, at this point, what, what uh, Tails is looking to do is like, all right, I'm going to build a really, really good army. And then I'm, I'm going to attack. Yeah, that's like that's like his plan at this moment. He's like, really good army, and then attack. And Crash really needs to get this Viking count up, building four Vikings at once. He's has he's still got zero. Ooh. Uh, there's four Colossus out now. As soon as those two Colossi go, get with this, does he just yeah, go? I, yeah, even if he's not maxed out, just go. Yeah. He's got he's got gateways to to reinforce to max out, but he should actually go now. Yeah, this, this is the perfect timing. It certainly is. This is uh, going to be hard for Crass to deal with unless he gets some good uh, concaves and some good flanks, mm. but it's not as easy There's on Belfia Vestige. Ghosts. There's not even enough EMPs really to deal with the amount of uh, Archons there is. Yeah, three EMPs across that. Those Archons would have to bundle up so closely. Nice position with the Vikings uh, at the very beginning of this fight here, but the Zealots are not actually here to reinforce these Archons, so they will take a lot of damage, but the Colossi reinforcing as well is the big de damage dealer. Crass taking so much damage and tails takes the first game without being super aggressive. He did uh, take a very fast third base, which was able to power him up a lot there. Uh, but notice how he didn't focus on trying to get storms or trying to do anything like that, which we'd usually see, just focusing on his economy and then focus on building a big army, which is what he did. And that's how he got this victory over Crass. And now Crass goes into this next game saying, one game away from being eliminated from the World Championship Series here. Yeah, it's a scary prospect here for Crass, um, especially a player that, you know, has only just really gathered his stride into Premier, trying to yeah. kind of prove himself on that big international stage. Uh, but Tails, he played a good game. He played a good game. Uh, I was... It was a really weird decision to just go very gateway exclusive uh, and then push up, as you said, rightly, uh, into uh, an engagement that was on Crass's terms. But he was able to bounce back from that. He was able to bounce back from that. And Tails now goes into this next series with just a single map away from moving on to the final match to play against Baby Knight. And, you know, uh, even if Tails was to advance from this series, I, I feel that it's going to be very difficult to play against Baby Knight in a PvP where we know Baby Knight is very good in and could easily, easily topple his opponent. But anyway, I don't think Tails is thinking too far ahead of himself right now because the next map is going to be on Whirlwind. Do you think that Crass opens up Command Center first again like he just did? If he did it on Belcher, Vestige, a two-player map, surely he does it on Whirlwind, a four-player map. Uh, he certainly could do. I would be scared uh, at doing it against Tails in a, in a second series, though. That would be kind of scary. Mm. So mm. I think that I think it would be a, a, a scary, a scary thing for Crass to do here. I don't think. Well, what do you think? Do you think it'd be wise? I would still do it. You think? Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see. As it's as you said, it's a four-player map, so it's something that is is very akin and attuned to these kinds of maps, uh, and you can get away even when your Protoss opponent is putting on a lot of aggression. So, let's see what to the table. Um, he already showed that he can go into that macro focus against Crass, which we were kind of speculating at the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. uh, but he did get scouted out with his aggression as well, with the scan. So it was back and forth, left and right, with what he wanted to do. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that Tails may try something again here. Even if it, I mean, I don't know what type of villain. There's obviously so many to choose from here. But I feel that Crass is just going to approach this game like, all right, command center first, scout heavily, get scans down, get SCV scouts around, and uh, hopefully be able to pick up a win. And we do now have, spawning down to the bottom left-hand corner, needs to bring it back. Really, really needs to keep his premier hopes alive. Down to the bottom left-hand corner are Red Terran, representing Neurosoft, as well as Germany. He is crass. And down to the bottom right are Blue Protoss, representing MVP and Korea. He is Tails. 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 All right. Hmm. Who who would you uh, prefer to see move on here? Hmm. It's you like know. you answer like the one that deserves it the most. Oh, oh so God. PC. <laughs> I think that after all of the attempts, after all of his runs through challenger qualifiers and premier qualifiers, tails having to battle against all of this lag, mm -hmm. I wouldn't mind seeing him advance on. He's tried so so hard. I mean, I'm not taking anything away from Crass, and I'm actually uh, not too bad friends with him. Um, but Tails, man, he's, he's he's been up against it from the very word going uh, Premier Europe. He has. He has. 
Um, Tails has gone for a 12 gateway here. So 12 gateway usually leaning obviously towards aggression here. And Cass is looking towards going command center first. We could see something as simple as a four gate come out from Tails. Mm. We, we certainly could do. And, uh, you know, with that crass here just going for that command center, as you rightly pointed out, uh, it could be in a, bit, a spot of bother. It depends on how well crass is actually going to scout out. Tails is going to scout his opponent last, which is not the best of positions, uh, but could just go straight blind into whatever he would want to do. I'm pretty sure he's going to go four gate. Yeah? Uh, well, as I say that, he kind of wishes oh, yeah. out, but... Okay, so if he'd saved that Chrono Boost there and built the Cyber Core, it was going to be a four gate, but upon Chrono Boost into the Zealot now, this is actually a decent position for him to be in because the probe will actually tell him where he is. By the Zealot is anywhere close to actually deciding which way he's going to go because the probe will arrive to the natural in the main before the Zealot needs to make a choice where he goes. I think he's going to the bottom because he had it rallied straight there, the gateway. So And there's no bunker down at all yeah. at this point. And if he Chrono Boost obviously into the Stalker and Militia Core behind it, and there's no bunker... Like MM, like I said with MMA, MMA was building a bunker while having three Marines down. But the Zealot's already there, and we only have the barracks just finishing up. And the mm -hmm. Zealot's almost there, and there is no bunker being made. Uh, the SAP did see the um, the Zealot, and it's uh, it's going to build a bunker. But look at that on the high ground here. He realizes that it's too oh, wow. fast to even try to defend the natural. A cool little uh, move here by uh, Crass, but how well is it going to work on out? He'll just have to, what, lift up the command center after the orbital command is finished. He, that one zealot's not going to kill an orbital command during all of that time. And, well, SCVs as well as that Marine do come off the line to try and deal with this one SCV. Uh, sorry, it was one zealot. Taking a few swipes, but good control by Crass thus far. Uh, whoop, 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 whoop. This guy. Oh, Zid. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Left, right, whoop, whoop. Go on, go on, Zealot. Try and chase. Uh, there is that SCV also sat behind the mineral line as well at Tails' base, so he could throw down an engineering bait. Oh, no, never mind. Nexus does go down. But yeah. He, at least he gets confirmation of it, right? Oh, he's going to lose. No, he's not. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He almost tried to lose that. Oh, he, oh, did lose he it. does. <laughs> but the problem is, is that, yes, the bunker's completed, but Crass is in the same kind of weird position he was previously where he's not really going to have the easiest time when the Stalker and Mothership Corps arrive to deal with mining from his natural. Yeah. Uh, there is a hidden SCV, by the way, on the natural of Tails, and that's going to be to scout out any uh, anything. Oh, he's almost lost the Stalker on the other side. Mm, he's uh, trying to chase it down with those Marines, and whoa, does not get it. Just Mothership barely Core is going to get pretty much every unit here. Yeah, these uh, Marines are going to die really going to regenerate shields and shoot from the high ground, maybe one shot. I don't even think, like, he doesn't even need to shoot with that Stalker, right? I think that was a little bit risky. Whoa, dude. well, now it's recharging. And now he doesn't have any Marines to defend the natural again now. Yeah. And if, if Tails does throw down, the, the probe actually sees the SCV, so I think Tails shouldn't even try. Oh, God, he's going to throw down four gateways. Nope. Uh, five gateways. And five in total, that is. The SCV spots it immediately. Can you stop this? Th <coughs> well, I guess you throw down a lot of bunkers, right, and just uh, try and uh, deal with it that way. But this still, I still feel this puts Crass in a horrible position. He just needed the bunker down super fast on the natural, and then it, this you don't have to deal with this. Yeah. The bunker was a little bit late. Hmm. And uh, obviously it was a 12 gateway, not 13, so the Zealot was there a little bit earlier than it would do usually, which is something to bear in mind. But he's even seen all these additional uh, gateways. Yeah, pylon. he knows what's up. But uh, unfortunately, he can't really do too much about it. The pylon's already down at the front. Warp gate's going to finish in a second. Uh, and once these four gateways kick in in terms of production, yes, he has four barracks worth of production himself. Uh, but breaking down that ramp, unless he does it right now... Yeah, he's not going to. Yeah. So well, a big focus point for, for Tails should be probably just to keep pro production going on. Uh, <clears throat> because the gateway threat is so big that, it, like you said, it's going to be hard to mine from his natural. I don't even know why he's trying to take his command center down. Oh. With uh, so many gateways coming in. What I mean... Oh... He has, to go. Come in, but he has to go before all of this comes out. And he is going to go for it. That one Zeller will end up dying along with these two Stalkers very quickly. And now that he's... Yeah. Uh, go back up. No, no, no. Go. That's really good for him to go back up. Well, I'm looking from Tails' side. It depends on which side looking for. But yeah. he can force with this all day long. The factory begins. Now, if I'm Tails, I'm chrono boosting my main Nexus. I'm taking the gases and teching up. Could because Kratz not have stayed at the bottom, though, and kind of just shut that down? I think he would have lost too much. You think? Yeah, with Guardian Shield, Force Fields uh. around that as well. It would have cut up nicely. From this position, Crass is just looking at a 0-2. His opponent has put a, a, an amazing gridlock on him. Yeah. 
look at the probe count. It's 39 now with Chrono Boost in there. Oh. He's going to be able to saturate from his gases very soon. He's only like three or four probes away from full saturation. And because he went for, you know, four barracks to try and beat out his opponent's production, he had, he doesn't have access to the starport yeah. quickly at all. So he's going to have a really difficult time of breaking down this ramp. Yeah, I go plus one attack, Colossus all in from here, I'd yeah. say. Something along those lines. Um, uh, because obviously Tails is in an all-in position, you don't really need to use Immortals. You've got enough time to get up to Colossus at this point. Chrono Boost into the Forge, get these upgrades down. I think this is a perfect map to just go for it, or perfect situation just to go for the Colossus all in. The Hallucinate Phoenix here will actually check. Oh, I didn't see that command center. Oh, sorry, I wasn't yeah, looking. sneaky, sneaky command center. That's kind of cool from Crass. That helps out the situation a bit. But you can see the starport. He knows the timing of it now, so he knows how long he can stay. Yeah, that's uh, very, very good information here for him. Um, but uh, unfortunately, he's he's kind of got a bit unlucky as Tails without with not seeing this command center in this specific spot. And wise of Crass actually to just throw all the mules down there and try and get as much out of it as possible, yeah. as quickly as possible. Yeah, this is really, really nice from Crass. This is helping out a lot. He's oh. basically like he's mining from two bases now. Still, Well, he is mining from two bases. Uh -oh. It's like he had it. But then he just saw it with those warpins of Stalkers. So now the Mothership Corps comes over there and says, hello. Yeah, I think <laughs> this is like a maybe force field the ramp and then leave moment now because the starport is pretty much done. Yeah. Um, you can go pick off the mules and SCVs from this and then fall back onto your Colossus, which is being chrono boosted out here. Um... This all-in is not going to be as strong as it could have been mm. if this command center wasn't mine, because he wouldn't have had all this extra money. But Crass supply blocked a little bit there to build three uh, supply depots. And that's a sorry sight here for Crass, having lost that command center. So now, what does Crass, I guess he just has to go straight for an attack or something. Coming yeah. back from this economical deficit is not easy. Hmm. 47 workers. Nice, six, nice, six. nice drop on the snapshot, but the mothership calls back already. Yeah. Um, with a couple of warpings in the main base, you shouldn't really do anything. And to be honest, if he loses many of that full of units, uh, that would not help out against. Uh, I wouldn't help out with anything. Crass very thankful that his opponent doesn't have blink right now, and uh, we'll get out with that one. Uh, but unfortunately for him, the follow up of those colossi with the thermal lance might just do a little bit too much damage here to uh, Crass. Oh, well, Crass has uh, got. He should be building Viking. Well, how many many Vex has he got? He's going to have five Three. soon. Hmm. Five. Uh, ideally, it would have been four, and then yeah. Viking production. Four is fine. Uh, plus one attack being chrono boosted out, cost being chrono boosted out. No additional pros been added on here. He's just at a comfortable 47. And then I think that we'll just see Stalkers being added on consistently. Maybe go with two Colossus, focus very heavily on the Viking control. I don't think Crass has realized that this is probably just going to be an all-in. Yeah. Surely he would have started Viking production uh, earlier. He needs, if he builds anything other from the starport than what it is going to be. Well, for Crass, he's actually not doing too bad a job here in terms of the damage in the main. Getting us yeah. a couple of workers as well as a cannon, trying to retreat out as well. Nice. Aniston forward on the natural too. This one won't do as much as he hopes. He'll get a couple of pro kills, which is always nice. But this is uh, actually getting a lot more than I thought he would do there. Mm, but at the same time, if he loses all this army, then what stops yeah. the counterattack? Yeah, that's, that's true. That's the, the flip side here. Yeah, so and he loses a lot of that. Oh, so bye -bye. you probably have to... Uh, Oh, he doesn't have Mothership Core either. Just lost that. Oh. Oh, with cleaning up these. Okay, that's enough. So There's... with cleaning up these, I just you just go right now. You've lost way too many probes. Like, way too many. 22 probes. You have to attack. There's no bunkers. Why is it? Crass. Uh-oh. No Vikings. Crass. No. Think my Crass might no! die. No. <laughs> He's building the bunkers now, but it's really, really late. Uh -oh. No Vikings. Where are the Colossi? Oh, okay. They're there. I no! was wondering where they were going. This might be bad for Crass. Um, There's a few units left over from Tails to deal with these medivacs. Well, but the this this oh. is this isn't bad. This is terrible. At least it's a planetary fortress. Weirdly enough, on this natural. Nice planetary fortress for the win. But still. Uh, well, oh, it, this is bad. Yeah, bunkers get salvaged. He's gonna try and hope at all uh, put all of his hopes in the planetary fortress. But the no force repair. fields they wrap around here. And bye-bye, Planetary Fortress. So much damage from Tails. No, Crass. No, GG. GG. Tails moves on to the final game of the evening. Beating out Crass, who unfortunately is eliminated in the round 32 at the World Championship Series, Europe Premier League. But that now means that Tails maybe, maybe can beat Baby Knight to make it to the live show next week, which is obviously the ultimate goal here from playing uh, playing from Korea. And I, yeah, I have to agree. That's uh, Tails' best, uh, best option here in terms of advancing on. Baby Knight, 
uh, was concerned that the coin flippy builds uh, going into a PvP against Tails could catch him out. So there is the possibility here that yep. we see Tails advancing on. Yep. But Baby Knight's no pushover in PvP. That's right. He's very, very good. It must come into this as a favorite. But can that be toppled here by Tails? He's beaten out Crass. And, well, he's just one series away from making it to the round of 16. All right. So after the break, guys, we shall find out who actually advances on. Will it be MVP Tails or will it be Millennium's Baby Knight? with a true 8,200 DPI Pro-Aim laser sensor. Get pure speed with a 32-bit Turbo Core V2 processor. Get pure command power with the easy shift button duplicator. Get pure atmosphere with a 16.8 million color lighting system. Rocket Cone Pure.